This video is one in a series of videos that cover database topics in three themes. We look at Oracle Apex, Application Express for web applications, relational database concepts for designing and building databases, and SQL, the programming language for working with a relational database. If you want to work with the video series, you can go to this URL to get the scripts and handouts. In this video, which is related to the Apex 3 video, we're going to look at the SQL commands that we ran in Apex using SQL Workshop. The commands create tables, sequences, and triggers, and also constraints, which define the relationships between tables. Back in Apex, I'm logged in in a developer account. We see that here, and if I go to if I go to SQL Workshop and back to SQL Scripts, the script that I uploaded is still there. First, you, though you don't need to do this, I'm going to try running this again and do Run Now. And when I scroll down, what I see is that out of 66, 54 are successful and 12 had errors. What that means is some of the commands can only be run once. So let's go in and take a look at the commands. And let's remember what the tables are. Let me bring in an image. Remember that we have these six tables, and I drew a diagram that showed how the tables are related to one another. So creating the table zips, the column names are defined, the data type is defined, and whether or not a field can be blank or not when you add a new record. It also defines a primary key. Watch the videos on database concepts to understand what the primary key does for us, but just briefly it uniquely identifies each record, kind of like each person's social security number here in the United States. We are also creating a sequence which will generate the primary key number that will always be unique and we're creating a trigger, which I'm not going to talk about at this point. We have commands that create comments about the fields in the table, and you'll see how that impacts what your reports and forms look like in Apex. So from create zips, that table, we have create the table persons, those fields. In this case, we have the primary key as purse ID, and we have another constraint which links the foreign key of zip code to the zip table. So it's create table, the table name, each column is listed, the data type is defined, and whether or not it can be left blank when a record is added. The other thing is constraints are defined that identify the primary key field, purse ID, and any foreign key fields, fields that are used to link to related data in another table. We are also creating a sequence and a trigger for that table. We also added comments for the fields in the table, which will help the forms be more user-friendly when we create the forms in Apex. The use of capital and lowercase letters really has no meaning here. The variation is used to make certain words stand out from other words. So create table indicates that it's an SQL command and employees would be the name of the object that's being created. If I take these commands, I'm going to do right click and select all and then right click and copy. And I go to SQL developer and I've created an account called testing and I'm going to connect to that Notice that I don't have any tables. If I right click and paste in the commands, I can run those. It'll be just like when I was in SQL Workshop and Apex. Actually on this one, I think I'll just run one. I'm gonna highlight zips and its sequence and column comments and triggers. And I will click Execute. Now when I come over here, and do a refresh, I see that I have that table. So whether you did it in Apex or you did it through SQL Developer, you are creating objects 
in the database that the application in APEX is going to use.